Hey guys, these cars are currently trying to jump over this hurdle by themselves. In my last video, I put neural networks inside of all of the cars and they learned how to drive completely on their own. They learned how to do this using genetic evolution, where the cars that did the best would replicate into other cars and be changed slightly. And then those other cars have a chance of being genetically better each round. So just through randomness alone, they learn how to drive a car. In this video, I'm going to focus on jumping. The jumping ability was already built into the car controller that I used. Same thing with the drifting. So that means I didn't have to add any code to the car itself. I just had to give the neural network access to the jumping ability so it could make it jump or not. The neural network now has a value that it outputs for jumping specifically. It's a number between zero and one. And if it's greater than 0.5, it is jumping. And if it's less than that, it won't. The car can only jump if all four wheels are touching the ground. So all of the brains have the ability to jump. And all I had to do was give them these hurdles to jump over. Currently, the cars cannot see these hurdles at all because the raycasts they use to see are on top of the cars, which is higher than the hurdles. So they just go over them. So in order to fix that, I added one raycast to the bottom. And this one's a little different because it can only detect hurdles. And that just helps the car know how far away the hurdles are. And this will help it figure out when the best time to jump is. In the beginning, the cars don't know what this new jump ability is. So they just spam it all the time. After a little bit of training, the cars learn that moving forward while spamming jump is a better strategy and sometimes the cars get lucky and accidentally jump over the hurdle. It is possible that one of these cars actually made the connection between the distance of the hurdle and pressing the jump button, but it is also possible that the cars are simply getting lucky while spamming jump. Eventually, they learn that jumping could be used to get past the hurdles, but sometimes they still use it when no hurdles are present. Many rounds later, they learn that they should only be pressing the jump button when there's a hurdle present. Adding these hurdles did make it take longer to train these cars to learn how to do a full lap than it did in the previous video because the problem was more complex. However, I didn't actually have to make any changes to the neural network, which means that that neural network in the previous video was enough for them to learn this extra ability as well. So it's, it's pretty cool that with rather low effort, you could actually just teach a neural network to learn a new thing without changing it at all. That's basically what a neural network does. It learns anything. You give it some inputs and it gives you some outputs. It doesn't care what those things are, as long as they're easy enough to solve with a simple neural network. That's why drifting is going to be a harder problem because we're going to have to make it a little bit less simple. I did notice that because they were jumping over the hurdles, they weren't able to learn how to drive so efficiently. So that's some problem we might have to address in the future to make them learn the tasks separately and keep them more isolated without them affecting each other. We want a car that could drive really well and jump really well at the same time. But for now, I'm fine with a car that could do both kind of okay. That's a problem for future me if I ever decide to tackle it.